Aloha, it's Kree Nana standing again with another battle report. This time I'm bringing you a 2,000 point game between my Chaos Legion's army, the Pyre Legion, versus an opponent's Dark Elf army. Now we set this game up about a week or two beforehand, so we both agreed that I should probably bring something else besides my Dark Elves, just to make the game a little bit more interesting, and that's why I'm bringing the Pyre Legion. And so right now I'm going to apologize that not all my models are uh, painted, some of them are not even put together. Uh, I was trying to squeeze in enough stuff for a 2,000 point game, so I'm bringing a Demon Prince that will be in the future used uh, for any of my champions that might accidentally turn into a Demon Prince, and then I have some bases standing in for some of those Chaos Warriors, uh, but if you can forgive that, this is a pretty good game. So let's get into deployment. On the far right flank I have a unit of dogs, then as we move towards the center you can see I have six uh, Dragon Ogres, and then a unit of Halberd wielding with shields, Chaos Warriors, and Keikus the Pyromancers in there. As we move over to the right we have another unit. This time the unit is armed with double hand weapons and I have the BSB inside. Behind them are some Flamers of Zinch. Then behind the hill is that Demon Prince. It doesn't have wings, it's going to be hoofing it across the board right now. And then finally another unit of um, War Dogs. Moving over to my opponent's uh, deployment, we see starting from the left a Cold One Chariot, another Cold One Chariot, a War Hydra on a hill, and then two of the Reaper Bolt Throwers with the level 2 Sorceress in the back. And then finally situated in the center of the board will be a horde of Dread Spears with the level 4 right behind it, then a unit of Cold One Knights with the Dreadlord attached, that's the General, and finally on the far right flank we have another War Hydra. My opponent wins the roll off to see who goes first, and he starts a little bit of his movement. What he really does is in the center, he doesn't move too much, he just moves his character into the Dread Spears and his level 2 over to the side. But on the left flank, don't have a picture of it unfortunately, both his uh, War Hydra and his Cold One Chariots move up. So in the magic phase, my opponent starts off by casting Pitted Shades at one of my blocks, and I decide I'm not too threatened by that and let that go through. I lose one warrior, I think. Uh, the Pendulum then gets targeted against my Dragon Ogres. That's more of a problem, so I go ahead and stop that. He then casts Word of Pain irresistibly on my unit that got hit with the Pit of Shades. And while that's an inconvenience, they're not going to be in combat anytime soon. We next move into the mo uh, shooting phase, and he has his Reaper Bolt Throwers take aim at my dogs and pretty much wipes them out, as you can see here. Uh, nothing's in range to panic, and we move into uh, Pyro Legion turn 1. And uh, I guess we'll take this moment to discuss what my game plan is going to be. So as I'm looking across the table, I'm, I'm pretty daunted about what I'm going to have to do to try to you know, engage this army and try to pull out a win. It's a very well-constructed army, and um, what, when you look at it, it appears to be that the center is probably the weakest part of the army. Uh, the edges of the army are filled with these uh, very powerful units that just go in there, wreck face, um, kind, of, kind of like those glass hammers. Uh, they go in there, round one, they do a lot of damage, they make whatever they're fighting pretty much combat ineffective, and then win or lose, uh, as long as they did that, they accomplish their job. Uh, so you would think that you probably want to try to stall the center, I mean stall the outside and focus on the center because that's a bunch of Dread Spears, uh, but really that's a trap. The, this thing, the, the Dread Spears is a meat grinder, uh, it's, it's a Occam's Mine Razor trap just waiting to happen. And so you don't really actually, I, I feel like I don't really want to engage the center at all. And so that's how my game plan is pretty much going to revolve. I'm either going to try to stall the center or avoid the center. That would be probably preferable. And then try to win on the outsides. And then as soon as I win on the outside, uh, maybe I, I'm going to try to you know flee and things like that. So that's going to be the game plan if I can stick with it. Uh, otherwise, if I if I get dragged into a fight and I start going, you know, gravitating towards the center, I'm just going to hit this meat grinder and lose everything. So before we go into the magic phase, I have to, of course, roll on the Eye of the Gods table because I am using a Chaos Legion's army, and this is how it goes. I took this as a very good sign that the first time I ever rolled on this table, uh, I got the Zinch-themed effect. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't roll any sixes, so it didn't come into play just yet. I jumped in the magic phase, of course. I get um, a blue fire off near the end of the phase, and then I try to cast uh, Trees of Zinch because I can. And they're both successful. The blue fire is the from my level 4 targeting this War Hydra. The War Hydra does pass its toughness test and now has a 6 plus regen save. And I then uh, put Trees of Zinch on these uh, Chaos Knights, 
hoping that they will fail stupidity test and having them move up a little bit will help me engage these units individually and get a jump on them. In the shooting phase, the Flamers of Zinch take aim at the other War Hydra, do a wound to it, but it also passes its toughness test and gets a 6 plus regen. In Dark Elves turn 2, my opponent uh, attempts a charge with his War Hydra into my Flamers. Unfortunately, he rolls really low and doesn't quite make it. Uh, otherwise, the rest of the movement is pretty small. You can see he shuffled a couple things around and nudged some things up. So we go into Dark Elf turn 2, and thanks to a timely channel, I was able to keep the dice pretty close together, and with that I was able to uh, shut down his magic phase. His first two spells I stop, he then tries to cast uh, Pit of Shades unchecked, but he comes up short. Uh, with that out of the way, he goes into the shooting phase, his uh, bolt throwers take aim this time at my, my flamers, and he's able to kill one and put a wound on another. As we go into Pyro Legion turn 2, I go ahead and decide this is the turn I need to try to isolate those flanks. So the first thing I do is charge the Demon Prince into the left here, and to this War Hydra who earlier had failed its charge. That was pretty easy because of that. Uh, however, as we move over to look at the rest of the board, uh, we can see here on the right flank that I came up short on both the charges I tried to make, with the Dragon Ogres going into the Hydra, and the Wards of Chaos going into the Cold One Knights. So that's a little too bad, um, but you know, I wasn't going to get any closer because his start range is frankly larger than mine. Um, so both of these were fairly long charge. I think the uh, Ogres needed an 8, the Wards of Chaos needed a 10, and that's probably as best as I was going to get it. So unfortunately I don't make it. Uh, the rest of the movement sees me moving the Flamer up into the center here. And the War Dogs, as you can see here on the right, I move into the forest. Now this ends up being a pretty significant uh, move on my part. So, um, you know, at, in the moment, uh, I was just kind of pushing my dogs up. But as I get a chance to look over my videos, uh, this is the best part about doing these vi YouTube videos, is to see these uh, things from a different uh, point of view. Uh, it, it, this becomes one of the most significant moves, I think, in the game. Or at least it, it kind of signifies a, a theme in the game. And I guess uh, Slanesh came around and found out that I was fighting some elves, so he kills one of the uh, Reaper Bolt Throwers for me. Uh, we go into the magic phase, and my opponent does a very good job of just shutting down my magic phase. And it also reminds me that I forgot to put a Dispel Scroll on my list, so uh, this is going to be fairly significant, and uh, he puts a well-placed one here. However, in the shooting phase, things look really well for me as my flamers take aim at that level 2 and a wiper off the board. So uh, I'm really enjoying these flamers. I really wish they were in the normal chaos book too. Um, anyways, we go into the combat phase between the Demon Prince and the Hydra. And if at all I had thought that I lost this game uh, by missing those charges on the right, I definitely have a very confident feeling that I'm going to lose this game because of how poorly my Demon Prince did against this Hydra. I ended up doing only two wounds to the Hydra. The Hydra did a whopping three wounds back to me. Uh, luckily with the charge I don't fade away because I am using uh, the Demon Prince not from the Wards of Chaos book but from Chaos Demons. More expensive uh, and I didn't realize that. Alright so here we go. So here we go into Dark Elf turn three and my opponent's really going to bring the pain of these Dark Elves and uh, well deserved too because he's been playing very patiently uh, we're just waiting for the opportunity, and here it comes. So first he's going to charge the Hydra and the Cold One Knights into this unit of Halberdiers, uh, Chaos Halberdiers, and easily make it. Uh, he's also going to charge the Dread Spears into the uh, Dual Wielding Chaos Warriors. Now this was a little bit of a above average charge, but not terribly long. I think you need an 8, maybe a 9. And then he makes this very easy charge with the Chariot that will probably finish off my Demon Prince. So we got the magic phase, and we know that I really need to stop Mind Razor. Now I don't think I'm going to win that battle overall. I think he's going to out attrition me, but I could stop it this time and put a little big dent in that unit. Uh, so he throws six dice at Mind Razor, and I just am not able to stop it. <laughs> and now that I think about it, I should probably have used all eight dice, but that's that's hindsight there for you. So anyways, uh, we go into the shooting phase, and the Reaper Bolt Thrower on the hill kills off one more of my Flamers, and we jump into combat. So we'll start on the left and work way across. Uh, here at, with the Demon Prince, the Chariot Impact hits kind of bounce off. Um, that gives me an opportunity to attack the Hydra before it can attack, and I do kill it. And so at the end of the day, he's not able to kill me, and uh, ends up being, I think, three wounds to the Hydra versus the Charge and the Flank. And I actually win this, he passes his break check, and I reform. Actually, let's skip the uh, Akka's combat for right now and just do this one. So he brings these uh, Coldwind Knights and the Hydra into this uh, Warriors of Chaos unit. He offers a challenge, or maybe I do, but his Dreadlord gets stuck in it because he doesn't have a champion. Uh, and these are my dice rolls for my armor saves. So my champion actually survives against the Dreadlord, which was pretty amazing. Uh, he does, a, you know, a, quite a few wounds, not enough to break me under Steadfast, and so I stick. 
So here we go into the uh, Dread Spears with the Occam's Vine Razor. Uh, I get a challenge with my BSB against their unit champion. I actually kill the unit champion and therefore I am blessed with plus one weapon skill but you know plus one weapon skill is not that great if your your unit that you're in gets evaporated and you die from the last stand rule so there you go they have the dread spears win and they reform like so so here we are in Pyrelegion turn three and uh, this is where those dogs are really in the way now so uh, I moved them here just kind of just moving them in a direction uh, maybe to eventually go to that reaper pro uh, crossbow but when I did that and I got to this part of the game, I realized I had really uh, limited what my Dragon Ogres could do. They could still get in combat with that Hydra, but instead of all six of them uh, being able to attack, I'm only going to be able to attack with two of them. So that's really unfortunate, and I should you know, keep an eye out for that. So uh, we'll talk about that more at the end of the game. So I'm pretty sure the gods can divine how these games are going to be going, and so they're pretty upset with me. Uh, luckily, none of my characters die from it. In the shooting phase, I had lined up my flamer here to take a shot here at the level 4, but then I forgot the shooting phase and we went straight into combat. So we start here with the Demon Prince. He's fighting the Chariot. He only needs to do one wound to me. Luckily, he doesn't uh, do it. I swing back. I don't actually kill it. It breaks. I overrun. I don't need that much to make it to the other Chariot, but I fall way short. In this other combat, I uh, ended up killing the Hydra with the Dragon Ogres, really liking how they fulfill that role of a uh, monster killer. Other things that are not that great against, we'll see that later in this game. Um, but other, overall, the uh, the rest are the Knights. They end up losing, of course, and they break. Now we had to randomize which direction they're going to go, because both of those units have uh, the same amount of ranks, and they fled through the Dread Spears. Now this does lead us, lead us into Dark Elf turn 4. He's going to declare a charge of his Dread Spears into my Chaos Warriors. Now I'm in a really good position right now. Uh, I could double flee and uh, flee through my dra Dragon Ogres. He could redirect into the Dragon Ogres if he makes it. Uh, he could make it, but of course I could just flee again. Uh, and then at, in my turn I can bring down my dogs to kind of uh, chaff him up uh, while my two units rally. Uh, so I'm in a pretty good position. He does declare the charge, and I deliberate for a long time about this. Uh, and I don't know. I just couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to do. Like, I knew the smartest play would probably be to flee. But at the same time, this wasn't a very serious game. And so I felt like I should probably just stick around and kill stuff. Because, uh, you know, the game started late. Uh... And we just kind of want to push things around and kill things. So, I mean, I think at the end of the day, I mean, I kind of just got the, you know, the bloodlust in me <laughs> and uh, decided to stick it out. Now, I had visions of glory that I could stop the Akko's Mind Razor and then uh, he might whiff a bunch, you know, because they are only Dread Spears. And then I would just start, you know, killing them like they're wheat in a field. Uh, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, he uh, does rally his uh, Cold One Knights here, and he moves his chariot so I can't see it. So here we go into uh, Occam's Mind Razor turn 4. He tries to cast it, and luckily I stop it. I've actually been channeling a lot this game, so that was very helpful. In the shooting phase, he takes aim at these dogs and kills one, but I do pass my break test. That doesn't happen too often, and we jump into combat. We have Keikus the Pyromancer get into a challenge against the BSB. Uh, he doesn't really do anything to me. I put one wound on him. The rest of the combat actually doesn't go too well for me, um, even without the Mind Razor. It's just so many attacks with so many rerolls. Now I know what it feels like, I guess. Um, I do kill quite a few, but he has so much static combat res, I think I end up losing by one. But luckily I stick, and that sends us into Pyromancer, or the Pyre Legion, uh, turn four. Unfortunately, even though I stuck, I just have no support for them. I can't bring these Dragon Ogres in. They're they're just too awkward to uh, fit anywhere. Uh, so they're just going to wait there patiently till it's their turn to fight these Dread Spears. Um, I decide at this point, you know, I'm definitely going to lose. So uh, how about we just avoid getting uh, tabled? So I'm going to play a little bit more KG with my Demon Prince here. And then I declare a charge with my uh, dogs into the Reaper Bolt Thrower, hoping I can pick up those points. And the gods continue to punish me. So uh, I do pass my leadership check, though, and we get a really low uh, magic phase. I always like those. He stops my first spell, but I'm able to get a blue fire off from the demon prince into his level 4. The wound sneaks in, and he fails his toughness test, and uh, he loses her. So there's some major points there for me. Uh, otherwise, we go into the combat. Um, 
We don't really do any wounds to each other. He loses by one, but he passes that break check. We go into the main combat, and I'm still in that challenge. We don't do any wounds to either each other this time, uh, but finally I succumb to the War of Attrition, and uh, they overrun into the Dragon Ogres. In my opponent's movement phase, he's going to try to pin in my Demon Prince. That's just going to be very hard to do, even without wings. Uh, the massive amount of movement that the Demon Prince has is going to make it really tricky for you to uh, be able to pin him in. Uh, but here's what he does. And uh, so we uh, skip the magic phase and we skip the shooting phase and we go straight into combat. Uh, he's able to kill one of my dogs. I break and run down the hill. Uh, in the main combat, Dragon Ogres are just not uh, made to fight blocks of infantry. They're much better against monsters or other monstrous infantry. And so I'm just not able to generate enough uh, combat res to defeat these uh, Dread Spears. Luckily, I don't lose by too much, and I stick. All right, so we uh, move on to my movement phase, Kekus Rallies. Uh, the Demon Prince sidesteps these threats, and we go into the magic phase. I guess uh, Zinch takes pity on me for being mean to me earlier, so he tries to kill a chariot for me but fails to wound. I then cast Infernal Gateway with my limited amount of dice and get it off and uh, kill off the last of these cold wind knights, so that's pretty nice. Alright, so if I hadn't already mentioned this, uh, today was a pretty hectic day for me on, when we were playing this game. I've forgotten a lot of things, including my own army books uh, and to charge my camera. So I start taking my pictures a little bit more intermittently so I can get enough pictures for the end of the game. Uh, so I don't have results of the combat here pictured, but I can tell you that before I struck, I went down to, I think, three uh, Dragon Ogres. I then realized I was going to lose this, so I might as well try to get the points where I can, and I direct uh, most of my attacks against the BSB, successfully killing him. Unfortunately, I still lose the combat. This time, I break, he runs me down, and he runs into Kekus. Unfortunately, the camera dies anyways, and I took some pictures of my, my cell phone, but they were crap, so I'm not going to put them up. Um, but I can tell you that he doesn't catch the Demon Prince in this turn. He fails to shoot, he has no magic, and Kekus actually holds because he doesn't do any combat damage to me. I think I end up killing maybe two of his own guys. Uh, I still lose, but I hold. We go into the final turn, and unfortunately, uh, the static res is a little too much for me. I don't make any uh, you know, additional kills anywhere else on the table. Uh, I do break, and he runs Kekus down. And so there you go. Uh, the Dark Elves do pull away with a victory here. I'd say this was a very close game all the way up until maybe the last couple of turns there. Uh, really enjoyed it. Very hard fought. Uh, seemed kind of up in the air until the, the last moments. In the beginning, it felt like it was decided for myself. Uh, I thought it was definitely going to be a Dark Elf victory. Uh, but then, you know, as the game developed, it was very up in the air. And it was, that's always the best games when everything ends up being, uh, you know, a close win or a close loss. Um, so overall, though, I mean, when I look back at this game, of course, the biggest mistake I would say was my style decision there not to flee when I had that double flee set up. Uh, but I'd probably do it again just because of the type of game we were playing. And uh, I, let me let me show you what I think was the probably the bigger uh, reason why the game turned the way it did, rather than me deciding to stick there. So simply, I would say that this game was lost with my chaff and my lack of using my dogs effectively. As you can see here, I deployed them on the far flanks like they're dark riders running around the field, you, you being utilitarian units. In reality, they, they suck. They're chaff units only. Uh, I should really have them more centralized towards this, the, my army. So centralized that I'm probably going to start running them as screens in front of my uh, troops since my troops are slower. Uh, I can run the, uh, the dogs in front of them. Uh, pretty recklessly uh, just maneuver them in such a ways that will create advantages for my warriors to uh, counter charge with uh, and flee away from every charge possible <laughs> when 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 it, when it comes up uh, and hopefully I just don't fail a bunch of leadership tests as they run through but I mean that's really the reason uh, I lost is just I'm not using the chaff effectively I would think and so when we get to this point here uh, where I could have did the double flee and then move the dogs in to intercept and it's a little too late. I feel like uh, I played pretty badly all the way up till, till then, and to try to pull it off now is kind of pointless. Um, and, you know, I, of course, you know, things could have worked out if I would have stuck with a plan to uh, double play. But like I said, uh, this wasn't a very, this is kind of a really laid back game. You kind of just want to kill things. And so, why flee? Just fight. <laughs> so that, that's how it goes. Um, so I hope you really enjoyed this. I do appreciate everybody's likes, comments, and subscriptions. And uh, one more thing before I let you guys go. All right, so recently, uh, Mitterum from uh, Mitterum and the Boys, uh, the Fluffmaster series, his battle reports. I'm sure you know him. We probably share the same subscribers. 
Uh, if not, I'll provide a link below. Is working with two other uh, YouTube personalities. Again, links below. Uh, Vince Venturella and Whoopi Womp. And they're coming together to create an award show, basically, where they want you to you know, go to their channel where they have a survey here and uh, write in who you think the best is in these categories that are about to pop up on the screen. So um, I, I really encourage everyone to do that. Uh, I like the idea of this. Uh, I'm not going to really sell you on any category I think I should be uh, written in. I don't actually think any of these would be applicable to me. Um, but I will do a video uh, detailing who I wrote in and uh, you know try to get you guys to vote for who I voted for. So please look forward to that. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please check out Mitt's channel and please uh, go vote. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you.